Hello friends, let's continue exploring the diversity of smart home gadgets, and in this video, we'll talk about an interesting sensor that will notify you of water leaks. Unlike many of its counterparts, it not only alerts you through the smart home system it interacts with via Zigbee, but also through a built-in siren. I will also test this sensor's compatibility with several popular smart home management systems. Besides the native Tuya Smart, I'll check it with Google Home, Apple HomeKit, the local Sunoff iHost controller, and of course, Home Assistant through the ZHA integration and the Zigbee 2 MQTT add-on. Before we start, as usual, please like this video to help others who are interested in smart home topics find it, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. The device type is a water leak detection sensor. Interface, Zigbee 3.0. Additional options, built-in siren, power, two AAA batteries, operating temperature range, from minus 10 to 55 degrees Celsius, relative humidity, from 0 to 100%, dimensions, 62.3 by 48.5 by 13.7 millimeters. The sensor arrived in a small cardboard box, labeled with its name and a schematic image, partially obscured by a couple of stickers with illegible text. It took about two weeks to arrive after ordering. The package includes only the sensor itself and two AAA batteries. Nothing else, not even a manual, was found in the box. Most leak sensors I've dealt with are round, and there are other options where the moisture sensor is connected to the detector by a wire and can be installed at a distance. This one, however, has a rectangular shape, partly due to the type of batteries it uses. On the underside, there are two contacts that react to a short circuit. They don't touch the floor because there are small legs at the corners. But if a water leak occurs, it will close the circuit and the sensor will activate. The top cover slides off in the direction indicated by the arrow on it. Underneath is the battery compartment for the AAA cells. There is also a speaker. The top cover of the sensor above it is perforated and a button. A short press checks the connection while holding it resets the device and puts it into pairing mode, indicated by a blinking LED. Let's install the included batteries and move on to testing the sensor. Let's enter pairing mode. Let's start, as usual, with the native control system, Tuya Smart. For Zigbee devices, a gateway is required. In my case, it's a wired version with HomeKit support, link to the review in the description. Let's launch the new device pairing mode. The device connected without any issues. Since this sensor falls into the emergency category, testing begins automatically after connection. The test involves ensuring that the Tuya Smart app is set to auto start and can run in the background. The sensor's plugin displays its current status, which can be either dry or leak detected. It also includes a log of activations, showing events, dates, times, and a list of automations in which the sensor is involved. In the settings menu, you can find information about the battery level and manage notifications. Free notifications include in-app messages about low battery and leaks. You can also purchase SMS or phone call alerts separately. The general settings indicate compatibility with Amazon Alexa and Google Home, allow you to check the firmware version, share access, and remove the sensor from the system. The sensor triggers successfully. Regarding automations, the sensor can act as a trigger, meaning it initiates tasks specified in the automation actions. There are two types of events. The state of the sensor contacts. If they are closed, a leak is detected. If open, no leak is detected. The battery level, which can be set to greater than, less than, or equal to a specified value. On the right, there's an example of an automation. In addition to the notification and sound signal from the sensor, a light will also turn on. Next, let's start testing compatibility with other systems, beginning with Google Home, which is officially supported. The connection is made through the menu of devices compatible with the service, where you need to select Tuya Smart from the list and enter your account credentials. After that, all supported devices will be automatically synced. The sensor appeared and is visible in the bottom right corner of the list. Here, you can view the sensor's status, either normal or alarmed, 
and check the battery level. By default, it retains the same name as in the Tuya app, but you can rename it here. As for Apple HomeKit, I'm using the Home Assistant integration of the same name to test compatibility, which operates via the same protocol. Anything that works here will also work in the original HomeKit. Additionally, this is one of the ways to add devices directly to Home Assistant. The gateway connected to the sensor is added here as a bridge. In the device list, besides the gateway, with a link to its review in the description, our sensor is also present. Although compatibility with Apple HomeKit is not officially stated, the sensor can indeed be used here. The only thing missing is the battery level, which can still be checked in the native app. The sensor's activation is detected correctly and immediately, with no delays. A crucial point to note is that communication through the HomeKit protocol works locally and does not depend on the availability of an internet connection. And while the sensor is still connected to the gateway, let's test its functionality within the Home Assistant integration called Tuya Smart. It's important to note that all usage options, including this one, work simultaneously. As expected, the sensor appeared here as well. However, unlike the previous HomeKit integration, this one operates similarly to Google Home through the linking of cloud accounts and relies on an internet connection. The sensor's activation is displayed correctly, and the battery level of the sensor is also visible here. Now, let's take a brief detour from Home Assistant to test the sensor with the Sunoff iHost Smart Home Management Hub. You can find links to its reviews in the description as well. The current firmware version at the time of testing is 2.1.1. The iHost has its own Zigbee coordinator based on the EFR32MG21 module, allowing devices to connect directly. The sensor we are reviewing is no exception and was detected correctly. In the list, it appears as a sensor with an external sensor. Since it hasn't been renamed yet, its tile displays the model number along with the current status. I have just shorted the contacts, leak detected. Now the contacts are open, no leak detected. The sensor functions correctly. As a reminder, the iHost operates locally and does not rely on internet access. Here's how its tile looks when expanded. It shows the current status, the time it was recorded, and the battery level. The same view but with the contacts closed, simulating a leak detection. Event log for the sensor's activations. The general settings menu and extended information. This section also includes the model and manufacturer ID. The sensor can be used as a trigger for automations, which, by the way, also operate locally. Available events include the sensor states, leak detected when the contacts are closed, and no leak when they are open. Now, returning to Home Assistant, let's test the sensor when connected to alternative coordinators. We'll use the native integration for managing Zigbee devices, ZHA, and a DIY coordinator with SkyConnect firmware, linked to its review in the description. We start by launching the new device pairing mode, and on the sensor, we enable pairing by holding the button. The device was detected and connected, with several entities recognized. These entities include the leak sensor status, firmware check, battery level, and identification button. The shorting of the sensor contacts is processed correctly, in real time. On the right is the event log, showing that the statuses change instantly depending on the state of the contacts. The sensor can be used in automations. Finally, let's check the Zigbee 2 MQTT add-on, with version 1.39.1 being the latest at the time of testing. As expected, the sensor is supported right out of the box, so there's no need to create or install external converters. It appears, much like in the Sunoff iHost, as a sensor with an external probe. Just to clarify, this is an end device meaning it cannot relay data for other nodes in the network. In addition to the leak sensor and battery level, there's also a binary sensor that will activate when the battery is nearly depleted and a tamper sensor, though this one doesn't actually work. Here's what the sensor activation looks like. Everything operates in real time and without internet dependency. These four entities are displayed in Home Assistant through the MQTT integration and can be used in automations. You'll find a link in the video description to one of my tutorials on notifications from emergency sensors like leak and smoke detectors. This sensor is quite interesting, with the built-in sound alarm being a notable advantage, as it will alert you to a leak even if the smart home system is not functioning. The use of AAA batteries, which have a higher capacity compared to flat batteries, 
is also a plus. Another strong point is its compatibility with all tested systems, Tuya Smart, Google Home, HomeKit, and the basic Home Assistant integration, all working simultaneously. As for drawbacks, the only one might be its relatively large size, although this is objectively due to the use of AAA batteries, which I just mentioned as an advantage. So it's more accurate to call this a feature of the device rather than a disadvantage. That's all for now. I hope you found this video useful and interesting. I would appreciate your likes as they help promote the video on YouTube. If you don't want to miss new reviews and tutorials, please subscribe to my channel. In the video description, you'll find links to the store where you can order this sensor, as well as other reviews and tutorials on this topic. You'll also find links to my Telegram channels, Facebook page, and a group for smart home discussions. Join in. It will be interesting. Thank you for your attention and see you next time. Peace to all.